This video is going to answer two questions about the camera. Number one, how do we invoke the camera and save the image to the SD card? And number two, if you're invoking the camera with an implicit intent, you're trying to save to the SD card and you're getting a null pointer exception, what is one possible reason? We're starting with an existing app that I've created in previous videos. And in this app, we can click the take photo button and it will bring up the camera emulator. We can click and then choose the checkbox. And what will happen is that will put the image that the camera took, this little simulated image, into a little image view down here. There's a, so that's already done. And that, we, as I mentioned, we did in a previous video. I'll just show you how we did that. Uh, what we do is we have this BTN take photo clicked and we invoke, uh, in, we, we uh, call this line here, intent camera intent equals new intent media store dot action image capture and then start activity for result camera intent and then we pass in a constant called camera request. That's invoking the camera. Now we receive the image by saying was the, did the user click yes or, or did the user click cancel? And are we hearing back from the camera request that we defined up above? And then what we do is we get the data out of the intent. In other words, we get the image thumbnail back from the camera in this line. And then we use this line here to show that thumbnail in an image view, which is what you see right down here. Now, I went through that a bit quickly because I've already covered that in a previous video. And if you're curious about that, I'll point you to that previous video and also the source code, which is freely available on GitHub. What our interest is in this video is how to change this so that we actually save the image to the SD card. So I'm using Android Studio and I have the Android device monitor up. And with the Android device monitor, we can take a look at what's on the virtual SD card for this uh, emulator. And I navigate to File Explorer, and then I go to Storage, SD Card, Pictures, and then there are several pictures out here that I've placed earlier. Again, this is the Android device monitor. Uh, how do we get here? We go in Android Studio, we go to Tools, Android, and then Android Device Monitor, and that pulls up that Android Device Monitor. So our success criteria here is to add one of these images. In other words, add an image to this location. That's what we're going to work on. Okay, so starting with what we have, I need to add one more qualifier in BTN Take Photo Clicked. And again, BTN Take Photo Clicked, this is the code that's going to be executed when we press this Take Photo button. So I need to add one more thing here. Right now I'm saying uh, I have an implicit intent that invokes the camera and I'm starting that intent. By default, if we leave it like that, then the camera is going to return to us a, just a little thumbnail of the picture that it took. But it's not actually going to save it to the SD card. It's just going to return that in memory. To save to the SD card, we need to add one more line. Actually, two more lines. What we need to do, I'm going to do these slightly out of order, is we need to say camera intent, which is our variable we've defined up here, dot put extra, oops, sorry, and then we're going to say android dot provider dot media store, whoops, dot extra, you see it auto completes for me, output, and now here's the tricky part, uh, we have to put a file in here where we want to save it. So let's just kind of hold this thought for just a moment. We just know that second argument has to. The first argument is saying, okay, I want you to save it. That's what I mean by media store extra output. The second argument is where I want to save it. Okay, well, let's say that this is a picture that we want to put in the, in the user's public space. So maybe the user can upload this to Facebook at a later time or email at a later time, something that is outside of our application. And that public area is going to be storage, SD card, and pictures, probably. But how do we know how to get that absolute path? The truth is, we don't want to. Uh, we want to ask the Android operating system how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say environment 
get external storage public directory, okay? And what that does gives us a reference to this area on the SD card where we store our different media types, our downloads, our movies, our music, and our pictures in this case. We have to tell it which one of those media types uh, we want to access. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say media store. Um, I'm sorry, wrong one. I'm going to say environment dot directory and take a look here. Directory alarms, DCIM, documents, downloads, movies, music, notification, pictures. Lines up very closely with what we have here. Alarms, downloads, movies, music, notifications, pictures. So the one that we want is directory pictures. Okay, and directory pictures. Okay. Now in Android Studio, a control alt V will take the result of this and save it to a variable. If you, if you see that, what happened, I didn't have to type any of that. I simply put my cursor on get external storage public directory and issued control alt V. And uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to shorten this suggested variable name to just picture directory and enter. Okay, we're halfway there. Now, we have just a directory, but we need a file name as well. And the file name we probably want to make unique so that we can be sure that we don't continuously override the same picture over and over again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, um, we'll say string picture name equals get picture name. And that's a method that does not yet exist. So it red lines. I put my cursor on it, Alt Enter, and I say create method. And I let, uh, I let Android Studio do some work for me. And sure enough, it has properly guessed uh, the correct method name and the correct return type, and it's marked it as private. That looks fine, so I will accept its proposal. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, OK, uh, I need a timestamp. So I'm going to say simple date format SDF equals oops equals new simple date format. Okay, inside of this I'm going to pass a string which is going to contain a format of months, day, year, and the current time. This will give us a relatively unique identifier if we're specific enough. If we go all the way down to seconds, we could even go to milliseconds if we want, but that will give us a fairly unique name as long as we don't anticipate that we'll take more than one picture per second. So simple date format, what I need to pass in here is a string. I'm going to say YYY for a four digit year, capital M, capital M for the month, and then DD for the day, underscore, hour, hour, capital H, lowercase m, lowercase m, SS for second, terminate with a semicolon, terminate this entire line with a semicolon. Now what I can do is I can say sdf.format to date. We have to do it this way because the date internally is simply a, a number of milliseconds since 1970, so we have to format it appropriately. Now it doesn't know which date we want, I'm going to alt enter and I'm going to say java.util.date, that's the date that I want. Once again, put my cursor on STF format. I'm going to say uh, alt enter, I'm sorry, uh, introduce local variable, that's fine. And we can say, uh, we can just call this timestamp. Okay. Now we might not be the only one who came up with this idea. So we want to add maybe something else to it. So what I might do is I might say, uh, plant places image and then concatenate timestamp and then concatenate dot jpg something like so and we can simply say return plant places image plus timestamp plus dot jpg and that's going to give us a, a relatively unique user a relatively unique picture name and I save okay uh, back to camera intent dot put extra we're pretty close now we have a directory and we have a picture name. Those two together are enough to give us a file. So I'm going to say file 
image file equals new file. And in this syntax, I can put the directory first, picture directory, and then the picture name next, and it will create a path with that directory and that picture name all the way down to that picture. Now the camera intent dot put extra wants a URI format. It does not want a file format. So I'm going to say URI dot from file and pass in our image file. Simply puts it in a different format for the a more independent format uh, that the camera can use. Control Alt V, introduce a variable, and we're going to say picture URI. There we go. And finally, we have enough to complete this last line. Picture URI. So now we are telling the camera that we want to store this image at this URI. Now, here's where the null pointer part comes in. We're, we're, we're finished with this part so far. We'll debug it in a second and make sure. But here's where the null pointer part comes in. And this is a little bit tricky. It caught me the first time I was using the camera. The camera intent wants to either save an image to the file, to the SD card, or return the image as a thumbnail, but not both. If I were to run this right now, more than likely we would end up with a null pointer exception right here, or maybe down here, uh, because it's getting back a null in this case. In other words, once you pass in this extra and you tell the camera to save the image at this location, you'll no longer get the image back on this line. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to simply comment out this line for the time being, and I'll choose save. Uh, and then we're going to want to check the Android device monitor and see if our image appears, and that's going to be our test. Now, let's say that we did want to save it and show a thumbnail. How do we do that? We need to do it in two different steps. We need to save it first, and then here we need to recall it. So we need to open it as an image that was already saved uh, either just now or maybe several months ago. We need to open it as we would any other image that's on the SD card. So with this being said, I'm going to save, and I'm going to debug. Okay, we'll give this just a moment. Now the emulator's up, I'm going to choose Take Photo. We see that the camera emulator comes up. I snap a picture, and I, I, this is a little bit off screen, but I'm going to choose the checkbox. Okay, and now you see that the thumbnail doesn't appear because we commented that out. But does the image appear on the SD card emulator? Let's take a look. So I go to Tools, Android, Android Device Monitor. And from the Android Device Monitor, I go to File Explorers. And now from File Explorer, I go to Storage, SD card, and I'm going to navigate two pictures. Now, luckily, I used a timestamp in the file name, and I can tell you that this is definitely April 6th of 2015. And if you take a look here, sure enough, uh, written on April 16th, 2015 at 8 o'clock, which is right about the time I did it, uh, here is our image. So, what we found is that the, we can use an implicit intent to invoke the camera. We can use a little bit of magic to assemble together a file name, convert that to a URI, pass that in as an extra, and that is a signal to the camera that we want to save the image to this location instead of showing a thumbnail. But we can only do one or the other. So once we do that, we're no longer going to get the thumbnail back. And so we have to comment out our previous work to save the thumbnail in, a, in, a, uh, in an image view in a bitmap. Now, if you missed this, don't worry. This is a separate commit on GitHub. I'll have the GitHub link down in the comments. And also, I'll more than likely replicate getting the thumbnail from the image on a different screen. Meanwhile, thank you for your attention. Let me know how, let me know how your own program works.